we speak about solid state the first important thing so basically in solid state what are the different uh, things you need to remember let us write this first heading solid state okay this is done so here in solid state you have different topics to remember let's start so the basic topic which you have to remember is nothing but types of solids okay so types of solids what are the different types of solids you have basically you have two varieties of solids one would be okay the this particular sketch pen is a bit lighter let me take a brighter sketch pen from my okay right so the types of solids the first one is amorphous solid okay the next classification is crystalline solids okay this is we have already studied so when we speak about amorphous solid what is the special it means what are the different properties of this basically whenever we say amorphous it is irregular in nature it means all the uh, lattice points the atoms or molecules are irregularly arranged irregularly arranged okay that when it is crystalline the first important thing you need to say they are regularly arranged all the points one after the other they're perfectly aligned one again here it is one here one point here one point here one point like that but in crystalline they are perfectly aligned one after the other okay what is the next important point of amorphous solids because of this irregular irregularity in arrangement how are the forces of attraction means the very short range order okay so they have short range forces or short range order short range here in crystalline they are regularly arranged so it is long range so this basically you may you may get it for one mark so i'm writing it next important thing of amorphous solid is they are isotropic in nature isotropic what is isotropic i've already done a video on this isotropic means nothing identical properties in all directions once again iso means similar identical properties in all directions in the other way crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature what is anisotropic now i also did a video for this please watch my solid state means different properties in different directions okay isotropic means same properties in same direction identical properties in all directions now here you will have different properties in different directions because the lattice points are like uh, arranged perfectly like this you when you draw all the different property uh, properties in different uh, directions right so once again iso means identical properties in all directions anisotropic means it is nothing but different properties in different directions right students hope this is clear this will all be useful for your one mark question right and the next important thing here the melting point is not fixed so melting point is not fixed because they are irregularly arranged isn't it so here when it comes to crystalline melting point is fixed okay this is also perfect what is the next important point you have to remember amorphous solids are they are called pseudo solids for example like glass okay and when it comes to crystalline solids they are true solids okay true solids let us write an example amorphous solids means the pseudo solids glass i can take talcum powder i can take when it comes to crystalline solids i can take diamond graphite isn't it that means the perfect uh, crystalline okay, graphite again is soft slippery when because it's a slide over the layers right so crystalline solids diamond i can get take the network solid the, co the covalent part of it this is okay i gave all the points one more thing you can remember for amorphous solids there is no definite heat of fusion means that uh, heat of fusion perfectly means it is not fixed at one point but in crystalline the heat of fusion is definite because they are regular in arrangement isn't it okay this is also clear now what should i remember why we have taken this basically whenever you are studying um, uh, differences for amorphous crystalline uh, you may get it for one mark question any part you may get so that's why i have taken that let me arrange my lens once okay i hope this is clear students right so after this alignment a uh, little bit curved it is okay so after this differences let me move my table okay this is a bit clearer thing hmm. now we have to study crystalline uh, classification so basically this crystalline solids are again classified into <coughs> four different types what are they crystalline are classified into molecular solids crystalline are also classified into <coughs> ionic solids crystalline are also classified into crystalline solids 
crystalline are also I means crystalline means they are okay crystalline again classified into covalent solids i'm sorry for this they're again classified into metallic solids okay so for the classification so in molecular solids what do you have basically you have both polar and non-polar uh, molecules present in this now what is the force of attraction acting here it is nothing but van der waals forces of attraction it means between the polar and non-polar molecules van der waals forces act so what are these van der waals forces nothing but it includes london dispersion forces dipole dipole moment hydrogen bonds correct students once again molecular solids they include both polar and non polar molecules okay and the force of attraction as i told you it is van der waals weak van der waals forces which includes what london dispersion forces hydrogen bonding dipole dipole moment so an example for molecular solid very important for one mark dry ice and then methane right when it comes to ionic solids nothing we know right we have both in ionic solids we have both positive cation and anion what force of attraction will act here it is nothing but electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged cation and the anion now in ionic what are the examples any ions you can give zns nacl mgcl2 like that when it comes to covalent you have covalent uh, uh, solids here, here atoms are bonded by which bond as the name suggests it is nothing but covalent bond here molecular means non polar and polar ionic means ions covalent means it contains atoms which are covalently bond correct so here as we have written crystalline what are the examples diamond here also i can give the same thing diamond is an example quartz is an example silica is an example right so when it comes to metallic it's nothing but basically uh, the metallic is something where you know you have cations which they move or float in the um, electron cloud means in the bed of electron the cations whatever are there they keep moving in the electron cloud so the cations will be moving so that is a metallic bond so in metallic bond uh, what will happen what are the bonds formed basically in metallic solids metallic bonds are formed in molecular solids molecular non molecular means the van der waals forces in ionic electrostatic forces in covalent covalent bond in metallic we have a metallic bond okay and what are the examples you can write different types of metals copper iron like that this is one students yes so now i know two things one is type of solids and i know the classification of crystalline solids let me mark this with a different um, sketch pen so that it is easy for you all okay i'll take a green sketch pen and i'll mark this amorphous you need to remember this property is crystalline again for crystalline classification molecular ionic covalent metallic this is done now after your uh, this one classification of solids sorry types of classes or classification of solids next important thing you need to rem remember very important that is nothing but unit cell and lattice points okay so next category so when it when i have to speak let me write on this way in solid state when we speak and then we are going to speak about different terms like unit cell lattice point crystal lattice like that okay so after solids or uh, this in types of solids i will be marking this as in this cloud form now i am going to take in the solids same thing i'll be taking the topic this is types of solids now i'm going to take types of unit cells very interesting isn't it types of unit cells done so the definition nobody will ask you but remember the important thing classification so unit cells where shall i write i'll write here unit cells are basically classified into two categories one is the primitive type of unit cell next is a center type of unit cell right students yes so in primitive type of unit cell so basically primitive what what are there so in primitive we are going to study about seven crystal systems those are the combinations with which we call the bravius lattices yes so the seven crystal systems which are there here are the first crystal system which we have or which we need to study in your um, types of unit cell that is nothing but triclinic so triclinic right so in je exam they'll be asking you about the angles and edges both alpha beta gamma and edges also we'll be writing that after that next type of primitive cell is cubic next type of primitive cell is hexagonal hexagonal three are over 
yes next next type of primitive cell is trigonal next type of primitive cell is orthorhombic orthorhombic next type of primitive cell is monoclinic right students what is the next type after orthorhombic then we have monoclinic okay after monoclinic how many are over one two three four five six one more is there after this after monoclinic you have hexagonal hexagonal okay these are the seven crystal systems <coughs> which form together or which are called the bravius lattices now we'll be writing the parameters in the next page now what are centered basically in the centered uh, uh, this one uh, crystal or centered unit cells centered unit cells are again divided into three types okay so let us write four also no problem centered are first is body centered cubic crystal lattice next is face centered fcc next is <coughs> simple cubic next is ecc and centered right so in the next page we'll be calculating the number of atoms for this one and we'll also be calculating the uh, parameters for the next one so let us come back and next see the parameters of the previous lattices as well as we're going to see the uh, what do you say the number of atoms in each right. let us turn the page i'm coming to the next page so what did we say now we are going to write the parameters of the previous lattices so types of solids are over types of unit cells are over now when i have to write the parameters so what are the different previous lattices we have the previous lattices are seven crystal systems correct now the previous lattices the first type is tetragonal let us write that the first is tetragonal or anything any this in, in tetragonal in tetragonal as we know in the unit cell you have both the edges as well as the what do you say um, your um, angles correct so in tetragonal always remember a is equal to b b is not equal to c edge length in tetragonal alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees so in cbsc they will not ask you the parameters but it's important now next one after tetragonal next is triclinic as my blue sketch pen is not clear i'm using this triclinic a is not equal to b b is not equal to c what about the angles alpha is not equal to beta beta is not equal to gamma which is 90 degree right third crystal systems <coughs> cubic crystals so when i have to speak about cubic crystals in cubic crystals a is equal to b b is equal to c right and what about the edge length edge length is over what are the angles alpha beta gamma all are equal which is equal to 90 degrees now let, let us write the next crystal system that is trigonal tetragonal is over now trigonal in trigonal systems again we will see the edge length uh, and the this one parameters okay so here a is equal to b is equal to c when i have to speak about alpha alpha is equal to beta beta is equal to gamma is, no, is not equal to 90 degrees four or over now let us write the fifth sixth and seventh after the fifth one next one is hexagonal in nature so hexagonal uh, crystal lattice or the hexagonal this lattice a uh, previous lattice here a is not equal to b b not equal to c then alpha equal b alpha and beta both are 90 degrees and gamma will be 120 degrees done sixth system monoclinic monoclinic so in monoclinic what happens in monoclinic when i speak about the parameters yes students right so in the monoclinic a is not equal to b b is not equal to c okay right alpha is is equal to gamma gamma is equal to 90 degrees and which is not equal to beta right students i am left with the last one that is orthorhombic seventh crystal system with this combinations only 14 are made right so last but not the least orthorhombic so in orthorhombic all the edge lengths are not equal right uh, students yes so and uh, your uh, what do you say alpha beta angles also so alpha beta angles alpha gamma 90 degrees 
not equal to beta so i think this is okay students this is clear right so here these are the parameters please keep noting it for the previous lattices okay and cbse they will not ask you now what are we left with we are left with calculation of number of atoms right students yes so when i speak about the number of atoms what should you remember i said in a unit cell basically you have the calculation of number of atoms let us divide now we are going to take the first page as types of unit cells okay types of unit cells done after this here we are going to take simple cubic here you are going to take bcc here you are going to get ccp or fcc here you are going to take hcp right students yes now let us calculate for this now here in um, in simple cubic now types of unit cells are these we were denoted by z right yeah in simple cubic as we have taken this is your cube yes you have all the atoms at the corners of the cube so this becomes 8 into so 1 is shaded by 8 isn't it so 1 by 8 so the number of atoms is 1 here so in bcc you have again when i draw the cube you have atoms with the all the eight corners is one concept here yes, students i'll mark it with blue so that it is clear you have all the atoms at all the eight corners and you have one at the center bcc so how is this how are you calculating this nothing 8 into 1 by 8 8 into 1 by 8 plus 1 is at the center isn't it only one so one it is equal to 2 done in ccp or fcc let us draw that in fcc again you have all the eight atoms on all the corners 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and all the faces 1 2 3 4 towards you 5 now the side 6 right so all the corners are also there all the faces are also there how to calculate 8 into 1 by 8 plus how many corners are there uh, or how many faces are there six each is shaded by half half by this side half by this side this one will share half this one will share half the six into half how much it comes to it comes to four now in hcp hcp basically i'm not able to I'll draw this if we calculate 12 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 3 plus 3 total it comes to 6 how means uh, i'll show you uh, one, one more thing also six how we are calculating hcp let's see this in hcp uh, this one i took i've taken this as just see z is equal to n by 6 plus n uh, i means n e by 3 okay n f by 2 plus and i by 1 this is what i have taken in and i have calculated so basically this corners whatever are there no it is shaded by 6 unit uh, cells okay faces by 2 edges by 3 okay edges by 3 faces by 2 and 6 corners means uh, corners are shaded by 6 right right students yes done when i take to when i take ecc the last one so in ecc n centered it is nothing but you have the ecc you have the cube like this okay cube like this joint and you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 on the top one down one so how many atoms students it's nothing but 8 into 1 by 8 plus 2 into this is half this is half so 2 into half it is nothing but two atoms right students this is what is your unit cells so we have studied what is meant by types of unit cell uh, types of solids we have learned